Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Pluto and I'm a lawyer based in Australia who has been covering Johnny Depp's trials both in Virginia and the UK since 2020. In fact, the topic of today's video was already extensively discussed in a video that I released two years ago when Amber first filed her counterclaim. But don't worry, I'm not going to refer you to it because we now have updated information simply by virtue of watching the trial and watching Adam's deposition in particular. We now have Warner Brothers telling us a very important detail. Please stick around to find out what it is if you don't know what it is already. And um, yeah, just new information. So time for a new video. I noticed on social media that there's been a lot of concern surrounding the counterclaim. People want to know, is the judge going to dismiss it? Is she going to grant Johnny summary judgment? He already tried once before the trial and failed. But now that we've heard the evidence, what's going to happen next? As of the day of filming, and I do aim to get this video up on the day of filming, which is the 21st, 21st of May, we don't know. I've just checked the court filings and Johnny's side has not filed a motion to dismiss or a motion for summary judgment. By the way, I do apologize if you can hear the rain outside. It is raining cats and dogs out there, and one of them <laughs> made it into my apartment. Okay, so the purpose of this video is to briefly explain agency law because a lot of people want to understand how is it that Johnny Depp can be held responsible for the three statements that Adam Waldman made to the press. This area of law is called agency, agency law or the law of agency, and it is much like every other area of law, very complicated, not straightforward. As we lawyers like to say, the law is gray. It's never black and white. Gray is synonymous with complicated. My job is to simplify the law to you so that you can understand in layman's terms what is going on and what it means for the counterclaim and Johnny's liability. Very briefly, agency law recognizes certain types of relationships known as fiduciary relationships. In these relationships, a party called the principal, which would be Johnny in this instance, places trust and confidence in the agent that they have retained to carry out specific tasks for them or to perform certain duties and obligations for them. The agent in this situation would be Adam Waldman, who has been retained by Johnny to carry out legal services on his behalf. And the relationship between client and attorney has long been seen and described as a fiduciary relationship, which places it very neatly under the agency umbrella. Now, this only applies if the agent acts within the scope of their employment. So that means that Adam's comments to the press must have been considered as a part of his duties owed to Johnny as his lawyer. And then we come into authorization. So in agency law, you have express or implied authorization. Express authorization is when the principal expressly, either verbally or in written form, authorizes the agent to perform certain tasks on their behalf. Implied authorization is, as its name suggests, implied. It's never expressly given to the agent, but it is necessary in order for the agent to carry out their duties and the obligations that they owe the principal. A very simple example is if you're a delivery person with a company and you have to go deliver items to customers. You have implied authority to use your company's vehicles to fulfill your obligations. You don't have to keep asking for permission to drive the vehicles to perform your job every single time you have to go out and make a delivery. So how is this relevant to Amber's counterclaim? Amber is alleging that when Adam made the three actionable statements to the press, I think it was the Daily Mail, he did so as Johnny's agent. This hasn't been proven yet in court. Amber was not able to produce any evidence of such instructions given by Johnny to Adam. And if you've watched Adam's deposition, you would know that it entirely consisted of Adam accepting Ben's instructions not to respond due to client attorney privilege. Work product also came up. And if you're wondering what that means, that's basically a doctrine that protects attorneys from disclosing any materials that they are relying upon in anticipation of litigation. So no evidence of 
Johnny instructing Adam to make these statements. I think it is very commonplace for lawyers to make comments about their client's case, especially when the case is a public one where all of the court filings are publicly available. Anyone can go to the Fairfax County online registry and you can access every one of the documents that have been filed in relation to this trial. What Adam said is a reflection of what Johnny is claiming in his complaint. So from my perspective, the way I see it is this was simply an attorney commenting on his client's argument, his client's stance in relation to his client's case. And yes, Adam Waldman was very heavily involved in the Virginia case until his uh, Pro Hack Vice admission was revoked. But at the time of making these statements to the Daily Mail, he was still Johnny's lawyer in relation to the case in Virginia. Having said that, that doesn't mean that it's a great idea for lawyers to go making comments to the press about their client's case because these things happen, meaning the defendant can use these public comments against the other side. So the first hurdle is determining whether Adam was acting as Johnny's agent. Now, I don't think it falls under implied authorization because I don't think that speaking to the press is a necessary thing that needs to be done in order for Adam to carry out his duties as Johnny's lawyer. So the way I see it, express authorization would have to be proven. Ironically, Amber's own lawyers in the past, not these ones, she had um, a lawyer by the name of Kaplan, who actually told the press, made a comment, that Johnny was abusive. And this is what I mean by saying that lawyers do this routinely, where they tell the press what their client's position is. Johnny didn't come after them for defamation but I suppose we're dealing with an incredibly vindictive person here known as Amber Heard. The next hurdle is actually determining whether Adam Waldman defamed Amber at all. So let's assume that agency has been proven. Adam did indeed act as Johnny's agent in this situation. Does that mean that the counterclaim will automatically succeed? No, because what Amber must prove next as the counterclaim plaintiff are all the elements of defamation. Those of you who've stuck around for the last two years know that I have repeatedly set out these elements, but very briefly, Amber must prove publication of a false statement of fact, not of opinion, to a third party, which clearly identifies the plaintiff and the defendant acted with actual malice. Now, in terms of damages, Amber is claiming defamation per se, in addition to defamation, because she is claiming that Adam accused her of perjury, which he did, and we'll get to that very briefly. Now, with defamation per se, which is what Johnny is claiming as well, there is no requirement to prove damages on the part of the plaintiff. This is because the allegations are of a criminal nature, so they're of you know an elevated level, and it's bad enough that they were put out there. Where Amber is going to find major issues are in the second element and the final one. So a false statement of fact and actual malice. I don't believe that what Adam said to the press was a false statement of fact. I believe it to be true based on the evidence before me and that has been available for years at this point. I have studied the evidence extensively with a fine tooth comb, made videos about it, analyzing every little detail, and I arrived at an informed decision. This is not bias. Defamation by its very definition only applies to false statements of fact. So no matter how destructive a true statement is to someone's reputation, it is not defamatory. But let's go further and assume that it was a false statement. Because Amber is a public figure, just like Johnny, actual malice must be proven. The definition of actual malice is publishing a statement knowing that it's false or with a reckless disregard for the truth. A reckless disregard for the truth is a much higher standard than negligence. Negligence is you were careless, whereas a reckless disregard for the truth is you couldn't care less whether it was true or not. So you acted maliciously. Adam's deposition revealed a very important fact that I was not aware of until the deposition. He submitted a claim with the LAPD alleging Amber and Rocky, Raquel Pennington, committed perjury multiple times in court. An investigation was open, but then it was transferred from the LAPD to the Sheriff's Department. The jury heard this. And for someone to go to such pains, to such great lengths, to take a binder, go all the way to the police, and file a claim of perjury, 
that really demonstrates to the jury that Adam was not acting with actual malice, that Adam was acting with a reasonable belief that the statements that he made, the hoax allegations, were true. He also listed in the deposition all of the witnesses whose testimony directly contradicted Amber's testimony, including her own witnesses, by the way. For example, Melanie Inglesis, the makeup artist, stated in her deposition that she didn't see a mark on Amber's face in the week leading up to the 27th of May, 2016. You can attribute that to makeup all you want, but we're not just talking about discoloration here, we're talking about swelling. Alejandro Romero, Trinity Esparza, Brandon Patterson, Isaac Baruch, the list goes on. And again, the jury listened to this. So they have been provided with the necessary evidence to make them doubt that Adam Waldman acted with actual malice. Someone acting with actual malice does not act with a reasonable belief that their statements were true. Now, with damages, as I said, damages are presumed. But again, let's go further. Let's say that Amber had to prove damages. Warner Brothers has confirmed that Adam's statements or Johnny did not impact their decisions with regards to her role in Aquaman 2 in the slightest. Reading directly, Ms. Heard did not suffer any adverse employment action by Warner Brothers in connection with either Aquaman or Aquaman 2 because of any of the allegedly defamatory statements by John C. Depp or Adam Waldman that are alleged in her counterclaim. Ms. Heard's compensation for Aquaman or Aquaman 2 was not reduced because of the counterclaim statements. Any alleged delay in picking up Ms. Heard's option for Aquaman 2 was due to creative issues in casting Ms. Heard in the role of Mira for Aquaman 2. Any alleged delay was not due to Ms. Heard's dispute with Mr. Depp or to any of the allegations in this lawsuit, specifically including the counterclaim statements. Warner Brothers would not have paid Ms. Heard more money on Aquaman 2 even if Ms. Heard had had more time to attempt to rene renegotiate her contract. And there we have it. And this is, of course, in addition to the evidence that was extracted from Amber during her cross-examination by Camille Vasquez. Amber's L'Oreal contract was renewed in November 2021, as I said in the summary video. Please do watch it if you haven't already. And the expert that they retained, Ron Schnell, a statistical and forensic social media analysis expert, gave evidence on Thursday in which he studied various hashtags, specifically those that were negative and positive to both Amber and Johnny during a specific period. So Amber's team's goal was to show there was a significant increase in negative hashtags after Adam's statements were published, the first one being the 8th of April, 2020. The hashtags, including those that are negative towards Amber, but also justice for Johnny Depp, existed at least since 2016. I believe justice for Johnny Depp was since 2013 and no one corrected that. So I'm gonna assume that it's true, but the negative hashtags were in existence since 2016 because many people didn't believe her allegations as soon as she made them. Secondly, one of the major spikes, if not the biggest spike against Amber took place in February of 2020 when Adam leaked the audio tapes once again people voiced their distaste and their hatred of Amber Heard after listening to these tapes. There were spikes after April, but then there was a specific one in July. And guess what happened in July of 2020? Many people don't know because it wasn't popular, it wasn't in the media. Johnny Depp's UK libel trial. I was on Twitter using that hashtag profusely during Johnny's trial. May it be justice for Johnny Depp or Amber Heard is an abuser, a liar. We just don't like you, Amber Heard. We're not bots, etc., etc. Interestingly, the April spike in negativity started on the 6th of April, two days before Adam Waldman's statement was even published by the Daily Mail. That doesn't help Amber's case because it's not showing a direct correlation between Adam Waldman's statements and an increase in negative hashtags. In fact, Mr. Dennison made it a point that Adam Waldman's statements and, and the dates of publication weren't even a part of the demonstrative that we saw. It was mainly releases of projects that Amber's name was attached to. So if anything, 
Their own expert only demonstrated that all of the hate online is a direct result of Amber's actions. The leaked audio tapes being the prime source of an increase, a huge spike in negative hashtags. Unfortunately, people like Amber Heard seem to be incapable of understanding that their actions have consequences and exposing these actions, exposing these people for the criminals and the abusers that they are is not defamation. It's called facing the music. And that's it for this video. I hope I clarified things for you. I don't think that her counterclaim will succeed. I really don't. I could be wrong. I didn't see Johnny losing the UK trial because he's always had incredibly strong independent evidence and Amber had nothing. But the son, you know, she wasn't the defendant. The son was still victorious. This is an entirely different case because we have a jury and I don't think that Amber will be able to get past the hurdle of actual malice. I really don't. It may be difficult to prove that it was a hoax, but I don't think it is difficult at all to prove that Adam Waldman did not act with actual malice because Adam established a foundation as to why he accused her of perjury, as to why he's accusing her of orchestrating a hoax. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you found it informative. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.